Grand Dali, of course, make constant humans. Galaxies are what typically get counted. Latest estimates show that the observable universe may contain a hundred billion of them. Bright and beautiful and packed with stars. Galaxies decorate the dark voids of space, like cities across a country at night. But just how voidy is the void of space? How empty is the countryside between cities? Just because galaxies are in your face and just because they would have us believe that nothing else matters, the universe may nonetheless contain hard to detect things between the galaxies. Maybe those things are more interesting or more important to the evolution of the universe than the galaxies themselves. Our own spiral-shaped galaxy, the Milky Way, is named for its spilled milk appearance to the unaided eye across Earth's nighttime sky. Indeed, the very word galaxy derives from the Greek galaxias, Milky. Our pair of nearest neighbor galaxies, which are 600,000 light years distant, are both small and irregularly shaped. Ferdinand Magallan's Ship's logs identified these cosmic objects during his famous round-the-world voyage of 1519. In his honor, we call them the large and small Magellanic clouds, and they are visible primarily from the southern hemisphere as a pair of cloud-like splotches on the sky, parked beyond the stars. The nearest galaxy larger than our own is 2 million light years away beyond the stars that trace the constellation Andromeda. This spiral galaxy, historically dubbed the Great Nebula in Andromeda, is a somewhat more massive and luminous twin of the Milky Way. Notice that the name for each system lacks reference to the existence of stars. Milky Way, Magellanic Clouds, Andromeda Nebula, all three were named before telescopes were invented so they could not yet be resolved into their stellar constituencies. Before we move on, I would like you guys to hit a pause and please subscribe to the channel. It's free of course and you can always change your mind. And yes, what a way to start the booktube journey yet again with an extract from the most awaited genre. The science and fiction genre. The very first books that we touched upon this channel and the last book was certainly similar to this one as well. And it's a person we all admire and adore. The man who shaped the modern astronomy, Neil deGrasse Tyson. And this is me, Prithu Chandler, the co-founder of Booktube, back after a long time. I hope you're up to date with the socials. The links will be up on your screen and the video description. And I hope you guys are following th us through this. Now let's move on to the second extract from the book. Long before anyone knew that the universe had a beginning, before we knew that the nearest large galaxy lies 2 million light years from Earth, before we knew how stars work or whether atoms exist, James Ferguson's enthusiastic introduction to his favourite science rang true. Yet his words, apart from their 18th century flourish, could have been written yesterday. But who gets to think that way? who gets to celebrate this cosmic view of life. Not the migrant farm worker, not the sweet shop worker, certainly not the homeless person rummaging through the trash for food. You need the luxury of time, not spent on mere survival. You need to live in a nation whose government values the search to understand humanity's place in the universe. You need a society in which intellectual pursuit can take you to the frontiers of discovery and which news of your discoveries can be routinely disseminated. By those measures, most citizens of industrialized nations do quite well. Yet the cosmic view comes with a hidden cost. When I travel thousands of miles to spend a few moments in the fast-moving shadow of the moon during a total solar eclipse, sometimes a loose side of Earth, when I pause and reflect on our expanding universe, with its galaxies hurtling away from one another, embedded within the ever-stretching, four-dimensional fabric of space and time, sometimes I forget that the uncounted people walk this earth without food or shelter, and that children are disproportionately represented among them. 
When I pore over the data that establish the mysterious presence of dark matter and dark energy throughout the universe, sometimes I forget that every day, every 24 hour rotation of Earth, people kill and get killed in the name of someone else's conception of God. And that some people who do not kill in the name of God kill in the name of needs or wants of political dogma. When I track the orbits of asteroids, comets and planets, each one a perioting dancer in a cosmic ballet, choreographed by the forces of gravity. Sometimes I forget that too many people act in wanton, disregard for the delicate interplay of Earth's atmosphere, oceans and land, with consequences that our children and our children's children will witness and pay for their health and well-being. Astrophysics for People in a Hurry is a 2017 popular science book by Neil deGrasse Tyson, centering around a number of basic questions about the universe. Published on May 2, 2017 by W. W. Norton and Company, the book is a collection of Tyson's essays that appeared in Natural History magazine at various times from 1997 to 2007. The book, the book's debut at one on the New York Times non-fiction bestseller list when it first appeared in May 2017. It sold 48,416 copies in its first week, making it the second most purchased overall in the US for that week, behind the children fiction's novel, The Dark Prophecy. A year later, it remained in the top five and had sold in excess of one million copies. And it's available for a price of around 300 to 400 rupees on Amazon Dodden. A must, must, must read, as you must have guessed from the extracts that we talked over. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And thank you for sticking with me. It's been a long time, but yes, we'll be more consistent with uploads. And keep, stay and tuned. And keep enjoying books. A happy week ahead from my side. Cheers and namaste. This is Prithu Chandler, the co-founder of BookTube, signing off.